Many of you have been asking this question. Our kids are being taught what? This is the name of the conference that's happening today in London. Speakers from all around the world are coming together with one voice speaking one message. The sex ed curriculum changes taking place in the UK by the end of this year are completely insane. I see minority communities like the Muslims, like black Christians, um, they do get it. They see this cultural Marxism landing and they're not happy with it. And they also see the damage. Whereas uh, some of the more mainstream um, uh, communities just don't seem to understand what's going on, nor are their leaders sounding the alarm, which is in my view, really tragic, but also very wrong. I'm worried sick about what is being taught to some of our children. And I believe many adults, many parents, Christians, non-Christians would want to know so that they could push back, so they could resist the craziness, because some of this stuff is, is madness. Well, in the context we're in today, uh, parents have a, a great role to play in protecting their children. Parents are very much undermined by our establishment, by our government at the moment. They're being sidelined and uh, there's a whole group of people, pressure groups, the LGBT movement, who want to effectively take over parenting and uh, bring our children up according to their um, beliefs and values, which we know are very destructive and harmful for, for children. So parents to do, particularly at this time, is engage with their schools and trying to, trying to influence this consultation process that by law has got to happen in every school to help shape the, the content and delivery of uh, compulsory relationships and sex education when it comes into force in September this year. Quite interesting to consider the role of the church in protecting children because what we're seeing is a capitulation in the churches um, and they are not actually standing up for uh, biblical values at all. So they need to return to the Bible, the truth of the Bible, and stand up for what it talks about in, regard, in that regard. I think parents can take action uh, by asking their schools what they plan to teach, um, the, especially in primary school I'm talking about, um, and if they believe there's content that is inappropriate or worse, they challenge it because schools are supposed to take their views into account. One of the things that we see uh, on the impact of children is there are things that they are being taught that aren't actually true. And this is a very dangerous game that we're playing. So we now see uh, in a local church, uh, I've talked to some of the young people, and they believe that uh, a man can become a woman, a woman can become a man, and this is beginning to take hold in a lot of the teaching in the schools. Uh, the problem is that uh, many people within the church have actually fallen for some of these uh, nonsenses, and the church should be involved in what Jesus said was, you shall know the truth, and the truth will set you free. If you start pe teaching people lies or half-truths, that will not set them free, that will actually bind them. So we need to have parents who can talk to their children, tell them the truth, and have open discussions. And I think that's one of the dangers we have in society at the moment. So when we silence people, we no longer have those discussions. As a conference like this, we need to open it wider and more people need to discuss what is true, what is false. We need to understand that there are basic scientific facts and these are being ignored and it's very dangerous for society and especially for our children. We believe that schools are meant to educate on behalf of parents. So parental involvement in the school curriculum, in the school as a whole, is to us very important. And we encourage uh, parents to get, in, get on to school governing bodies where possible because parents have positions on school governing bodies. I've been on a number of school governing bodies myself and you can, from that position, have a have a good influence on, on the school. It's very important that, that churches are teaching strong moral values to children and that parents are reinforcing the values that, that, uh, that churches are teaching. It's also good if church leaders themselves are also involved 
within the schools. I mean, I know a number of church leaders that go in and help take school assemblies, for instance. I think the strongest message for me is the importance of boldness, the a boldness to go out there and be willing to stand for what is the truth fearlessly. We mustn't as Christians think that somehow we're going to leave it to somebody else or we're going to be content with just lobbying our MP and think that's enough for me. We've got to have the courage to do what some Muslims have done in Birmingham and as I say in some of these schools where they've been willing to stand at the school gates and say I'm not willing to put up with this. So we've got to be, we've got to talk to heads, we've got to talk to church leaders, we've got to work together and we've got to see action and we've got to see things done. I believe that the parents have to get there first because the children get exposed to all sorts of crazy things these days, whether it's at school or somewhere else. Children are like sponges. Whatever they come across, they just soak it up. The parents have got to get in first. We, we try to, to help them to do that, one way or another, through our literature, through educating people, by meeting them directly and some of us go out to the uh, school gate campaign giving out leaflets to parents at, at schools and say you know you've got to get ahead of this don't just trust the school to um, do everything for you they might say oh it's okay um, we are not going to teach this LGBT and gay and transgender stuff to your kids, don't worry, we won't do it. And then the kid comes home from school with a school book and the parent sees what they've taught and, and, uh, and it turns out they've been misled. We don't want this, this kind of thing to happen to parents, so it's, it's important to educate the people up front. Well, I wish the church would do something. I don't think they're doing enough. Um, I've heard people in, in church, church leaders, saying, well, um, the, the children have got to know about LGBT. The truth is they don't. They'll learn about it soon enough, but when they're young, they need their innocence. They're just children. What message would I leave with the conference? Don't give in. You know what is right. You, you know what you believe. Don't be intimidated into backing down. Just hold the line. We'll get through this. In, in a few years' time, if, if we can hold the line, we'll eventually see that the bone gay myth is going to collapse. I think it's in a state of collapse already. I think the bone gay edifice is going to come tumbling down, but we just have to keep going on. We're looking to impact children's lives by doing a lot of uh, research into all the background facts because a lot of um, the arguments that are put forward underlying relationships and sex education have been very emotional and just based on bullying and accepting everybody, uh, which is fine. Uh, we don't wish to not accept people, but in fact, all the medical evidence and the data shows that there are serious problems in a lot of the ideas that are being promoted, especially in relation to um, promiscuity, for instance. So we do a lot of research in compiling all the data, and we do a lot of lobbying within government. So we are trying to change the narrative. Parents need to know that they are the primary educators of their children, not the state. At the moment, there seems to be a big shift to put responsibility for children with the state, but this is wrong. Our parents need to stand up and say to government, you are teaching my child in loco parentis. Therefore, I want my child to be educated in line with my belief and my values, as is protected under UK law. So they need to stand on their rights and to go along and make a fuss. The church should play a much bigger role in protecting children. They have actually, uh, it's quite worrying the way that they seem to have taken on board the whole um, LGBT Stonewall agenda. Church schools in the Anglican church, at any rate, are now recommending Stonewall resources, which are overtly um, trying to uh, promote and normalize LGBT behaviors. The church ought to be standing up and standing on the values in the Bible and recommending resources that are in line with Christian teaching. So they could be doing a lot more. 
parents be mobilized, stand up, say how you want your children to be taught and say what the values of Christian education are and make sure that they are enforced. So go out there, demand that schools show you what they're going to be teaching and demand that you are consulted with in putting together the program for uh, children as is enshrined under law at the moment. We're really very concerned about the way education is going. Um, some of the sex education uh, programs will sexualize very young children and expose them to things that we think is inappropriate and introduce ideas about transgenderism um, and homosexuality and other sexual ideas uh, that is inappropriate and is not going to help them um, in their own development. Um, and so we are um, producing resources about that, um, explaining to teachers and to parents um, what they can do, what their rights are, what they're not required to teach, what they are required to teach and um, how you can inform your school and challenge your school about what they're doing depending on what they're doing. Talk about it clearly with your children and, um, and engage with them at an uh, age-appropriate manner depending where they're at. Check what your school is teaching and to engage with the school about that and, and why it's being taught and how it's being taught and, and challenge where they will claim that they're required to teach it, often they're not actually required to teach it, and even under the new regulations. Um, check out, there's some resources on our website, christianconcern.com. So I think that um, protecting children is primarily the role of parents. I wouldn't want to say that parents should delegate it either to schools or to churches in some ways, but I think the churches should be helping parents and informing parents about what is happening and teaching them how to speak up about their children and teaching them how to inform their children about this kind of stuff and how to talk about it as well and teaching about what the Bible says about parenting and about sexual ethics very clearly. Well, I think we're faced with a cultural challenge today that is very real and, and very much, you know, people are becoming much more aware of the challenge that we face today. One of the things we really need to do is recognise that freedoms that are not forfeited and we need to be prepared to stand up and make our voices heard in this whole area. If more parents and more people actually attended these kind of conferences, it would give them more encouragement and it will educate them more. The conference was absolutely brilliant. I've uh, attended some of these conferences before. So uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's always a pleasure to be here, you know, to meet people and parents that are on the same page as us, concerned about the children. I've been in this campaign for a year now and behind the scenes, morally, most parents and people supported us anyway. Now, what is happening is, you know, people are actually now getting the courage to come out and uh, speak up, whereas before, mo most of the people were quite intimidated and scared that if they did come out, they may lose their jobs or, you know, they will be, uh, you know, demonized or you know you know harmed in some way most of the parents and and people i spoke to over the past year morally they've all supported us behind the scenes and they do feel that uh, children are harmed uh, by these ideologies and this kind of education in schools being willing to start to go through a pain barrier which says we cannot trust the state to raise our children. We're responsible for our children. So it's, it's a different um, hierarchy of values and investment. Parents far more engaged with their children's education and far more engaged with the wider issues, the whole LGBT realm. Uh, there would be a focus on the freedoms that we're now losing, but the freedoms would come to the fore again. And, um, uh, and, and people would be free and um, empowered to talk about what's better for society, actually what's best for society. Um, I took from today the, the seriousness of this issue of sexuality and the broadness of it. It's not just, um, it's, it's many things in one that are spiraling into many issues and we need to be aware of this. Yeah. I was really encouraged. I'm a youth motivational speaker and I also focus, or should I say I'm focusing more on the area of sexual purity and the whole world of sexuality. And I think this has inspired me to, to be more proactive and brave with the message, taking on my message into the world for sure. It's been a remarkable day. The relationship and sex education program will never be looked at the same way again. I want to ask you watching, what are you going to do to protect children's lives? As Christians, we have the truth, we have the science, we have the resurrection power. Don't just join the movement. 
be the movement.